Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography. Um, it's a channel that I've set up on YouTube so that I can showcase my photography and also my experiences with wildlife and nature and share them with you. In this edition of uh, Kevin Hartley Photography, what I want to do is a video on how to photograph wildlife from a vehicle. The normal approach of a, a wildlife photographer is that um, we normally use hides on nature reserves, um, pop-up hides, um, or, or, or build improvised hides to to hide um, from the from the wildlife so that we can get closer to them to take the photographs that we want. Um, however, if you're fortunate fortunate enough to to own a vehicle, you actually find that you can get quite close to wildlife in a vehicle. Um, birds certainly are a lot less scared of um, people um, when they're in vehicles, and it gives you a great opportunity to to get close as I said and to get some some good photographs like these. Using a, a vehicle as a hide, um, the, the, there are a number of advantages that, that you can gain. Um, gives you flexibility, so in other words um, you get yourself into a position um, if the wildlife don't turn up, then you can just you can just move on um, to a new position. A uh, lot more difficult um, sitting in a a, a, a pop-up hide or something like that. Um, the vehicle itself offers enough space and enough room um, to give you comfort. You can carry a hell of a lot more equipment in the car. And what I'll do in the video is I'll go through what equipment I I use for when I'm um, photographing from a vehicle. Uh, and as I said, that gives you a lot of convenience and comfort. Uh, the last thing I want to add before we go into the main content of, of the video is that um, safety is a big issue when you're photographing from a vehicle. You have to be considerate of other road users. You can't just park up anywhere you want. Um, and you also have to be aware of pedestrians as well. So make sure that when you do park up, it's in a safe place. You're not obstructing um, any gateways uh, or vehicles or pedestrians. So uh, in this video, what I want to do is I want to cover the equipment I carry. Uh, and why I carry it, uh, and then go through how I actually set my vehicle up, um, set my equipment up in the car, in, in the vehicle to take the, the photographs, um, and then what I'll do is I will share with you uh, what I consider to be my top ten photographs that I've taken from inside the vehicle. So let's go. Okay, what I want to do now is I want to look at the equipment that I use for photographing wildlife from a vehicle. Um, I've been doing wildlife photography for a number of years now so I've been able to amass um, all my, my gear over those years. Um, for, for, for others it's all dependent on your budget. So I'll go through the equipment that, that I use. First thing I have in a car is this car storage um, boot, boot thing. Um, keep this in the house. Uh, load my kit up the night before. We had a, an old saying in the army, um, it's called the 7 P's. Prior preparation and planning prevents piss poor performance. I now adapt that to stand for prior preparation and planning prevents piss poor photography. So in other words, the more preparation and planning you put into it, um, the greater your chances are of capturing that, that photograph in wildlife. Uh, and I'll give you a good example um, later on um, of how I got caught out once and, and I hope it never happens again. Anyway, back to the equipment. Equipment I use is camera wise I have the Nikon D500 probably regarded as one of the best wildlife cameras in the world um, it's top of the range um, 10 frames a second great for, for, for birds in flight uh, and I have a number of lenses now, I'm not going to go into the technical details of the camera or the lenses I'm just going to give you the, the basics uh, I have a, a prime 500mm I have a 200 to 500 zoom lens and this is the one that I, I would use the, the majority of the time um, zoom lenses um, are, are, are better for giving you give you gives you more adaptation and, and, and range for, for photographing wildlife I also have a, a, a 70 to 200 this is a Tamron and um, that's for getting more environmental type pictures of where wildlife comes really close to the vehicle And I also carry um, a speed light, a flash. Um, can be a bit controversial flash in wildlife photography, 
but I purely use this as a fill in. So where there's lots of shadows, I just use it as a fill, so it's quite a weak flash um, that, that, that I use. That in essence is the camera equipment that I carry, and they go into, as I said, the storage box. Um, next thing I want to look at is the support equipment, so what I use to actually support my camera in the vehicle. Um, there are a number of options. First option is actually this um, mount um, that fits onto your, your, your window on the car. It's pretty much a, in a fixed position, you're fixed, although you can go left and right, up and down. Um, so that, that's the window mount. Just put that in there. The next option is the bean bag. You get bean bags in all sorts of shapes and sizes. This is quite a simple one. Uh, and again, that just leans over either your your door window frame in the bag. And here's another type. And this is the one that, that I tend to use. And I'll show you using that in the, the setup. Again, fits over the, 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 the door window frame. Camera goes on to the bean bag. Gives you the support. The other option which is quite a cheap option, and is a very good option as well, is to use a piece of pipe insulation. Um, very cheap, you'll get this at any, any DIY shop, a um, couple of quid. Um, split down the middle, here, yeah. split down the middle, and just fits over your window. And you've got lots of range and movement for um, putting your camera on. And just fits in there like that. Um, next thing I'll, I'll look at is scrim net. Um, folds out. You may f you, you may think, well, why do you need a scrim net when you're sitting in a car? I want to show you how it's set up. Set, set up. You'll see exactly why you need need one of these. And I carry two of these in in the car. Um, can also act as a good face covering. So scrim net. into the bag along with my other one okay um, so that's the, the camera equipment and that's the support equipment um, other bits and bobs that, that I carry a pair of gloves and a snood now you've only got to look at the shine on my face, the colour of my hands, the colour of my face uh, and that sticking out of the window of a vehicle um, especially my ugly mug will scare any wildlife off um, gloves on completely takes away the, sh the shine and glare of my hands and the same if I put a snood over my face and again I'll demonstrate that to you when I show you how to set it up in the vehicle. So again, gloves and snood into the box. Um, other things I'll take is map of the local area that, that, that I'm going to, just so I can, uh, you know, if I've got to move. One of the advantages of, as I said, in a vehicle is if the wildlife's not there, you, you can move. You can move quite easily and quickly. Um, so I like to carry a map. Obviously a mobile phone, again very useful, um, just got to google what, you, what, what, what you're after. That goes in my pocket. And then, in the winter, a flask, in the summer, cold water. And a little bit of nourishment. So that in essence is the equipment that I carry in my vehicle when I'm going to photograph wildlife from it. Um, one thing I did leave out, which is very important, is binoculars. Obviously for scanning the countryside to see what's about.
And there we have it. That's everything loaded up in this box, which sits quite comfortably in the passenger footwell or on the passenger seat of my car. And everything is there. So, that's the equipment. How do we put that equipment into action? And that's the next thing we'll look at. Okay, we've just looked at the equipment that I use for photographing wildlife from a vehicle. What I'm going to look at now is, very quickly, just is how I set my vehicle up inside so that I can do that. Um, so, what I'm going to do is, everything's packed in my box, ready to go the night before. Prior preparation and planning prevents piss poor photography. Um, so, up in the morning, bit of breakfast, fill my flask. I'll get my cold water, keep them in the side well of the car, ready at hand. And then from the box itself, which just sits next to me here on the passenger seat, the one thing that I do is I set my camera up before I leave home. Now, what I do with this is I take the camera strap off because it just gets in the way. Um, and then what I do is I have a set of generic settings. Um, why is that, you say? Um, well, I want to relate a little story to you. Here's a picture of a barn owl that I took uh, on a day that I went to Bempton Cliffs, very early in the morning. Um, I left in, in pitch black about, I don't know, half past five in the morning to get there for daylight. Um, I always have the, the camera, as I said, just sits right next to me here, ready to go if I see something. Um, I was driving down a, a small country lane near to Bempton itself, uh, when I saw what, I, what was, and I thought at the time, was a barn owl in the field. And I thought, great. So, slowed down, window down, got into a position and waited for this, this barn owl that was quartering. Hopefully that it would come near me, and it did. Um, as it approached me, I then started taking pictures, and it flew past the, past the car. It was on the opposite side. It wasn't until I then looked at the, the pictures excitingly, thinking I'd got some great shots of a bar now, that I realised that I hadn't changed the settings from the night from, from the day before. So the settings were all wrong. Um, the picture's okay, um, but it's a bit soft. Um, so that was a, a what I would call an exp expensive lesson to learn. Um, so what I do is I have a set of generic settings that, that I put in the camera. Um, 500 millimeter lens. Um, it's uh, a 5.6. Its sweet spot is about 7.1. Um, so for aperture, I set it at 7.1. Shutter speed. This is all manual. Shutter speed uh, set it at 1,000. Uh, and ISO, I just set it on auto. And then, as I said, it just sits in the side in that box next to me. Uh, it's well protected and it's ready to go. So that's the basics of, 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 of how I set my, the vehicle up before, before I even leave the house. Um, then what we need to look at next is, once we actually get into position, how we actually set the vehicle up. And that's what we'll do now. There's nothing more that will scare wildlife quicker than the shape of a human being. The outline, the silhouette, the colour of your face, the colour of your hands, and dead giveaway to, to wildlife. As soon as they see you, they're off. And that's why filming from a, a vehicle can sometimes offer you uh, a better opportunity uh, using the vehicle as a hide. But even then, once you're in the vehicle, um, and as you can see from this, um, my hands, my face, uh, my glasses, um, my silhouette to, to, to the background, are all giveaways and can scare wildlife and we have to think about those and I'll deal with those when I talk about how I set my vehicle up for photographing wildlife from the vehicle. Okay, when we looked at the, the equipment that um, you can use inside a vehicle, um, one of the things we talked about was the window support methods. Um, three main methods was the window lock mount, the bean bag, and the pipe insulation. I'm going to deal with only two which I use. I, I don't use a window lock mount. Um, I find it's too fixed. In other words, once it's in position, that's it. And there's a lot of fiddling around.
to, 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 to move to, to other places quickly. So therefore, I prefer the bean bag and the uh, pipe insulation. Bean bag, quite simple. Sits on the top of the, the, the window. Camera. On top of the bean bag. Need to turn my hat around for this. And you can get down at the position. And you can move up, down, right, left. It gives you good solid support, the bean bag. The other option is the pipe insulation. Quite simply, a piece of pipe insulation. You can also get these as life, life preservers and swimming pools. A piece of foam cut down the middle fits over the, 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 the window edge. This is my preferred method. And again, camera. Right, there, up, down. Good solid foundation for your camera. So my preferred method for window support for photographing from a vehicle in a car is to use this pipe insulation method. Dead cheap couple of quid, something like that, if that, you get it in B&Q, any uh, DIY shop. Here you can see by simply adding some pair of gloves to my hands and a, a shrewd to my, my, my face, I can reduce the glare coming off my body and scare the wildlife. However, I still have the problem of the silhouette at the back of the vehicle, which we'll deal with next. As we can see, the addition of a scrim net across the passenger door gives us that protection uh, against a silhouette in the car. Uh, movement is one of the biggest things that will scare wildlife away. Um, the addition of the, the scrim net across the passenger door uh, just completely breaks out the, the outline of your silhouette in the vehicle. The final option is to also add a scrimnet to the driver's side window, which we'll have a look at now. In this option, you can see that it gives you complete cover of your face, your silhouette, your shape, everything. Um, but this is one, it takes a little bit of time to set up, um, and if you're going to be photographing something that's quite nervous, then this is the one that I suggest that you use. Thanks for watching this edition of Kevin Hartley Photography and how to photograph wildlife from a vehicle. I cover things like equipment, how to set the vehicle up, and it's my equipment and, and it's how I set my vehicle up. I'm not saying that this is the, the golden way to do it, it's just the way that I set myself up to photograph wildlife from a vehicle. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that if you've learned something from it, if you can hit the like button. If you'd like to see more like this, then please hit the subscribe button. So, until the next time. Stay safe, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.